A and E, Alcohol in England, Peter Dench. Another great book by Peter. Another fantastic book by Blue Coat Press. It's that big Blue Coat Press size, which is 12 by 11. It's 156 pages. I think this is a continuation of the England Uncensored, which I think Peter published about 2012. This book was um, 2014, and then you, I think Peter went on to do the British Abroad. He had a really productive 10 years, Peter, with um, Dench Does Dallas, which was about 2015, I think. I've covered that. He did the Dench Dozen, which I think was 2017. I think before all of this, he had Hungry Eye, which he was an author of. That was about 2013. And now he is about to bring out a new book, which was based on the World Cup in 2018, and that is the Trans-Siberian World Cup. Also last year, he published the A1, which was his journey up and down the A1 from the London to the north of England. So... I'm just about rounded off all of his books. The only book I haven't done is England Uncensored, and I haven't got a copy. I don't know where my copy is, just so if you're listening, Peter, you might be aware that I haven't got a copy of English Uncensored for some reason. I thought I had everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it. I'm not going to go through all of it. This book's very available on Blue Coat Press. If you want Peter to sign it, I'm sure if you... Email Colin at Blue Coat Press or get in touch with Peter. They will sort you out. Don't buy this on Amazon. If it's on the Blue Coat Press website, get on Blue Coat Press. I'll put a link on. Buy it from there. And that way it's better for the photographer and the publishing company in terms of their cut. Because Amazon do take a lot of a big cut from the um, from the website. Okay. So just going through the books. Let's have a look at this. 156 pages. It is, like I said, a continuation, I think, of, of his study of the British and, uh, and, and, and their, their exploits with alcohol. And this is a lovely white cover with a dust jacket, a bit about Peter there. And then at the end, it's the same, Peter Dench, in fact. I think this, is a, this front bit here is something, I'll, I'll read out what it says. It says... Pickle, seuss, mullered, blotto, hog whimpering, pie eyed, tired and emotional, downwind of a few, the presence of many words and phrases in the English language that describe the state of inebriation surely says something about the English themselves. This is a nation that seeks comfort of oblivion towards the bottom of a bottle. But why do the English tipple until they fall over? Is it simply the weather, so wearingly unpredictable? Is it to overcome the awkwardness inherent of a half denied class system? Is it just the English are more culturally advanced and have realised that there's no cure for the human condition but nice tasting pink colours. All these possibilities are explored in this book. And I think it's a great setup. It's all about the British getting drunk. We can look at it as a sort of way of looking upon yourself because I'm sure you've been in many of these situations which I'm going to show you. Um, there's an intro by Peter here and about a roughly dated 2014, which is there, which I'm not going to show you. And then here's a bottle of the dog's bollocks, white wine, a can of Foster's Lager, and a West Ham fan club pen and placed at the memorial in a graveyard in Chestnut in December 2001. So this book was published in 2014, like I said. So... I think, are we looking at these? Everything's dated. So I would say in the region of this book was done, I would guess in a five-year spread of about 2000, 2040, so four years. Okay, so we set the marker. I tell you what, there's this thingy. I'm going to come down on here. But there's almost a sort of devil-like shadow on this, almost like Batman. It's almost like an owly, devilly, sinister backdrop in the reflection of that stone there. How interesting is that? Okay, so I'm not going to show you all of it. Like I said, we've got, if I can show you here, we've got front, left, we've got right. I'm going to show you everything on the right. 
most of the stuff on the right. And you can then, if you like the book, go and buy it. And I'm just going to get the right positioning here. I love this book. I think it's a, it's a really good testament to a, a photographer who works very hard at his craft. He picks a subject matter and then shoots the hell out of it. Simple subject matter and then shoots the hell out of it. He's a very industrious photographer and sometimes photographers get lost in subject matter and they think they've got to spend 20, 30 years doing a subject and trying to document it. Saying that, I've just done that myself. But Peter is a really, is somebody you can learn off from somebody who spends six months on a project, seven months on a project, a year or two years on a project, and comes up with an array of different books. And you can learn a lot from the way he operates. So there is some text with this. This one's not actually on the, on the shot, but a lot of them are. This one's on the left, and it says a picnic in Twickenham, the England rugby match, Twickenham Stadium. So he's covering all sorts of classes from the, the middle class um, uh, to the working class. Let's have a look at it. I want to just put that down there and uh, I can drop that a little bit there. That's better. Okay, cool. So we've got the young football top there. Um, Cleethorpes. Classic interiors of, of, of pubs in um, Dorset. It's great, sort of working man's club shoot, isn't it? Fantastic. Except like Roger Moore. This is the classic games. Sure, we've all done that. And that is in St Ives. Crazy. Lovely contrast here. What I like about this is the sort of, if you look at the refinement and the, the, the elegance and the, the blue representing Tory blue, who knows? And the telegraph there, you know, I, I, it is. And then you've got this side, you've got the special brew, the tattoo man, the dribbles. How? It's, it's a really great photo photograph. The thing is, though, it's like Peter, his mechanisms he uses to get into these scenarios, and he'll see stuff, and he has the bottle to just go up. He'll either smash it, or he'll work his way in, and maybe he'll sort of be showing his attention to this lady. But he knows what he wants is on this side here. And it's, it's how he does that, and that is a good operator. That's somebody who can see a shot. He stumbled across that and just thought it was his birthday, you know. So this was in um, Royal Ascot. That's great. He's probably too drunk to care, but that special brew's really symbolic, isn't it? Brilliant. And you know, the sort of awkwardness of the, the drinking and the, the sort of pomp and ceremony of the, of the time. That's good. Oh, that's got some great stuff on the left, but I'm not going to show you. That's classic, isn't it? Look at that. That looks like uh, Leicester Square, Trafalgar Square. <laughs> classic. Got to have a bit of Elvis in your book. Look great. St Ives. Blackpool by the looks of it. Yeah. Hen weekend. Now the select the sort of middle classes in Park Lane. I wonder if some of these came by jobs and in how we got to some of these. And I've covered functions and parties in Park Lane. And I wonder if it's been part of a shoot and stuff like that, and how he's got access. It's in West Sussex, I got that, symbolic. Epsom, the way it says, it's a great shot, isn't it? It's quite a sort of, he's had quite a bit of mileage out of this shot. And, and you know, everything about it is the red, white and blue, even the cars and very sort of great, sort of happy, positive, you know, British culture picture, you know, if that's a, a phrase you want to use. It's fantastic. One of my favourite shots of Peter's, I love this shot. I've actually copied this shot a few times for stock 
and I, I, sort of similar style of shooting and um, I just thought it was really sort of visionary, you know, really good vision to see sort of stuff like this. And it sort of contrasted on the other side with some sort of, you know, that sort of style of stuff, you know, it's, it's quite interesting how he's using the left side to complement the right side. And as I've said with Peter's work before, in Dench Does Dallas, he does this a lot, you know, it's not about just putting a picture on a page, he's using other pictures in the, in the narrative structure of the edit to complement each other. So with me showing you one side, actually, to get the bigger picture, you need to look at these left side pictures as well. And again, that other side, left side picture is really relevant to this sort of shot. And Lanark. And Wiltshire. I think this is after a rugby match in England. England rugby match. This looks like a Olympian, this is like a beer festival or something, yeah. You can see how he's been working to try and, um, you know, get all the symbolic side of it as well, all the, the commercial side, because it's not just about boys getting drunk, it's not about girls and boys in the street getting drunk. It, 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 I see what he's trying to do, how, how our nation's consumed with ale and beer and alcohol, not just in sort of down the pub or at an event, or he's trying to see it as a sort of commercial side as well, almost like a trade event, and then jumping in to this sort of stuff. You know, and let me just go back a little bit here. I think he's sort of breaking off a little bit with the shoot, and um, he's almost chaptering these books, or we've got a white page here, and he's sort of more, you know, like, down at the races and stuff like that, and then he's he's sort of... He's, this is almost like a... like a hidden chapter set up in this book as well, and I can see he's breaking the pictures up. He's a very clever editor, Peter. I do see that, and I, I do appreciate the way he works in terms of his editing skills and how he... I think he he edits before he shoots. He knows what he's shooting and he picks up pictures and he, in the process of his shooting, is editing at the same time. I can see it in his work. I'd love him to say something about that because I, I just believe he he's a very good editor of his work as he's shooting it before he's shooting. He knows exactly the pictures he's looking for based on the last shoot he's done. Something like that. Like this, look, you've got that, and then you've got that. It's just great, great, great understanding of narrative and how pictures work together. Hat, hat, that, I guarantee there's a hat on this side. I'm not going to show you, not that one. It's great, you know, putting yourself in these positions. Uh, it's like a real skill to sort of continue a project and Peter's last 10 years has been really a prolific period for Peter and books great shot look at the guy just looking on there it's crazy one of my favorite shots I wouldn't like to say how many of us have been in that situation but there's so many interesting things about this there's the sick there's the bald heads but even that light is just a sort of like a ball there, you know? It's like, it's, it's a weird juxtaposition of, of circles, this shot, you know? It's great, circle in there, circle there. I just keep seeing circles and it, it's, it's great. You know, there's a couple of pictures with genitalia in, I don't think we need to see. I love that shot as well, that, just that connection with her. Get in the moment. These sort of shots here are sort of quite solitary, quite little, like a bit more space involved with the shot.
in your face. This is more right in the thick party of the of, of, of somewhere like a nightclub and things like this. Obviously, this is a pub. This is in um, Lancashire. With youth culture. Look at that. I love this shot. Let's get down on this. This is such a great shot. Why is this so small? This shot needs to be huge. It's such a great shot. Look at the look at the frames. Look at this. You've got this here. You've got the ballet dancer. And you take that away. I've got the man and the cigarette. It's such a lovely shot, really well observed. Great vision. Why is it so small? Why it's probably one of the most strongest shots in the whole book, and it's tiny. Baffles me. There's a bit of nudity on the left side, which is a great shot, but I won't show you. So sort of that closeness again. A lovely. Look at that. Such a great, look at this man, great, great photography. Now there's a white page, you know, I think we're chaptering off into something else and we're going into the sort of, um, into that sexualization maybe of, of drinking culture. And there's definitely a few words on the other bit I'm not gonna show you. Here's the cover, which I love, absolutely love, the standing cover. It's great abstract again, this shot here, and then you got like that, you know, it's just floor shots again, editing, floor, legs, it's about the ground. Oh, amazing. Back to the youth. Great. Dad dancing. Great vision. And more the sort of people now looking or more absurd when they're drinking. It's great. It's, again, there's other stuff on that side. One of my favorite shots. Do you know what? I, I want to know what happened 10 minutes before this and 10 minutes after this shot. It's such a fantastic shot. And do you know what? That could be very innocent, but he's done a really good job in developing it. And I have been in this situation, and I know, doesn't matter whether that's innocent, you're in drinking, you've got a sort of charged character, for even if he's good or bad, you just don't know which way it's gonna go. The drink has a tendency to be very unpredictable, as I'm sure many of you are aware. So we're going back to the ugliness again of drinking, the fighting, and the results. There's a lot of gruesome stuff now, which, some gruesome stuff which I'm gonna, I'm not really gonna show you. Uh, we'll hit that. There's a lot of sort of accidents and stuff like that. And I think it's a really interesting overview of, Drink culture at the beginning of the 2010s and where we are as a nation, and I think it's very relevant to who we are as a group and of people, you know, on this island. And I think you've done a good job here, Peter. And again, I'm a real fan of your editing skills. I love your editing. And, and this bit here, which I'm not going to go into, is sort of, it's single pictures and it's just, it's just sort of talking and coming out of the story, which I'm not going to go into. I think it should go out and part with some silver and get out and buy this book. It's a great book. He's a great photographer. He hasn't produced a bad book as far as I'm concerned. I want to get a hold of England Uncensored and I'll have a look at that. Thank you.